can give you that closed section if you need it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's um, 315-82-A11. The adequacy of accessory parking areas and travel loading spaces for special exception uses shall be subject to review and determination as an internal part of the site plan by the Board of, board of Appeals as provided in the applicable provisions and then at site for what the standards are for it. I have a width of the yard. Did we mention that? The width? Uh, yes. Yeah. Width and a square foot. I think we mentioned mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So that's seven. Okay. So at this time, does the planning board feel that they want to refer them for the seven area variances? You can make a motion to do so. I think it's actually six, but I think that the side yard could, be, could be six. Total of 80. So, yeah, so let me know. So, yeah, we'll be up to seven, ten days, both side yard requirement of 80 feet. And then, John, what is your uh, opinion on the, uh, which direction you felt they should have went, or could have went, there would be variances and stuff? Well, the alternate would just be whether the code required one use mm -hmm. to say, Two uses, you know, but that would really be up to the applicant and the CBA. Mm -hmm. Your board can't approve it either way. Mm -hmm. But if you leave it open to the CBA, they can figure out how they want to handle it, as long as they know that it's a project that you're considering. Mm -hmm. Is that something people do? They go to the CBA with options, or do I have to make up my mind and go there and say we want to go this way, that way? Point and say we're presenting it this way, but yeah. and then explain the whole situation. And if they prefer to approve it in a different manner, they certainly can. You can provide like your first pick, then or in the alternative, another direction. <laughs> you see, the tough thing with this, and this is obviously why we're asking for all these variances, is because the way the code is written, if you have a property that's less than 80,000 square feet, which is a substantial piece of property. It's two acres. And what we did is we scanned the whole uh, MD district to look at every lot. And there's there's only one lot in the whole MD district that is above 80,000 square feet, and I believe it's owned by the church. Every other lot in the whole district <coughs> is less than 80,000 square feet. We actually have, I think, the second most frontage width of any lot at like 184 point something. So in essence, anybody who, who, go, who, who wants to develop any piece of property in the whole MD district with more than one business has to go for every one of these areas. <coughs> because the problem is that um, the way, the way it's it set up, you can't put, I mean, one, one business, one use, let's call it, one business on 80,000 square feet is a huge lot, you know. I mean, like especially in a neighborhood business, because you have so many businesses in that area that are like, let's say, a building that is um, not a huge building, but you have five businesses in one building, five businesses in another, three businesses in the other. So it's kind of weird the way the code is written because it's kind of pushing you away from doing that. But the area is a neighborhood business area where that really is kind of the norm. So it's kind of like weird the way it's set up because. I mean, I don't think you would want that area with somebody buying two acres and putting one store. So kind of, unless you're, unless you're, uh, you know, putting a big, big business, I guess you guys want, you guys want to develop like a main street look where people are walking around and shopping and going in and out. So that's why we're trying to have to do this. That's the, like, unfortunately, the, the code is not up to us. You know, we can't create no, I get it. Code. I get it. So we just have to work with it, and we mm -hmm. have to. Right. Going through the same conversation with other people, you know, applying what or zone says one thing, it's like, oh, because of that one word, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, one yeah. word is the. That's our problem. That's, that's one, one. One. <laughs> one word. One word. One word. It says one. It says one. Then we want it, but we really wouldn't need one variance if it was just that one yeah. variance. Yeah, right. Just take that out. Yeah. Get, but that's why I just wanted to explain a little, because it's just, I feel like we're asking for a lot, but we're kind of not, because I mean, anybody who comes here to develop yeah. any piece with one than one business has to get at least yeah. you know, six of these variants. And it would be six, Stephanie. It's uh, 75 feet, both side yards. So we're in the 
John, for the both drones, because one of their side yards meets over 40 feet, do they, then they would immediately... One, one side yard, you're looking at the smaller, which is... So the left side, six, six point five. Yeah. So the one side, we have to get the variance. The both side yards we need. Depending. I can do the calculation. Make the building two feet bigger. Go for the go for all. That's not the rest. And and the other thing I mentioned is uh, you have what is deemed as a utility on the left hand side because it's frontier. It's not like a store or anything like that. Um, I don't see any reason why I might be wrong, but there would be any objection to a variance in that spot. Comment John might be wrong. Um, but because of the location, because of what kind of building it is, deemed as a utility. That's how it is, like a power station or something. Mm -hmm. okay.
um, draft it on behalf of the board. Is that something you guys want to um, how soon typically can we get in front of the DBA? That I don't know. I don't either. I'll have to check on that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not the attorney for that board. Okay. Yeah. I would say, suggest proceeding. If you can get an opinion letter. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, we're not going to wait around. I, I, right. I agree. Thank you, John. We'd appreciate it. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We Well, this board meets twice a month, so um, they'll be oh. meeting again this month. And the ZV8 meets in between, correct? Or something like that? I have no idea. I think so, right? I've got it written yeah. in the book. Yeah. May, Mayor say, shaking his head, yes, so. Yeah, I think that's good, yeah, which is nice because okay. it kind of keeps the flow going. Yeah, yeah. Don't we need I won't be here tomorrow, but I'll be back on Monday, so um, I'll, get, I'll start working on it. No problem. Yeah, okay. Do you have access to that calendar here tonight or no? The calendar is something we're talking about. I haven't written in my book. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's what we were doing. We were doing the second and Fourth Thursdays of the month. Mm -hmm. So our next meeting, I can notice um, for the 28th, and then obviously I would notice them all together so that I don't have to do one every month. If that's if that still works for everybody, that works for me. So the second meeting, first, the third, third Thursday workshop, and the fourth Thursday of the month is the actual meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you go to the second meeting. Through and check if there are any public conflicts when you're going out the meeting. Uh, no, that's okay. If there are, if there, if there's a public conflict. It will be posted. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, for Christmas, like when we met um, yes, to get a new service, we call it. Yeah, they know it. But when you put out the service, it doesn't need to be done at that point. We don't have to put it out. 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 For a public hearing, it's required to give a certain amount of time, which is a whole different story, but just for regular meeting. So, um, so if you want to make a motion to set the 2024 2021 meeting schedule for the second meeting, the second Thursday of the month, and all regular meetings being the fourth Thursday of the month. So, I'd like to make a motion for the 2021 2024 meetings, the second Thursday of the month. Yeah,